Group one is on track in this multi-phase qualifying format that really builds to a, nat a natural crescendo and point of excitement to see, A, first of all, who can make it into the Fast 12, then the Firestone Fast 6, and who's going to have the speed like this man did last year, Renus VK of Ed Carpenter Racing, celebrating his 50th NTT IndyCar Series career start tomorrow. But first, he's got to qualify, and here's a reminder of the rules. Fields divided into two groups based on practice time. That's going to help them hopefully find a clean lap. But on a 2.3-mile track, you're still talking 13 or 14 drivers that have to space themselves out. I talked to this guy right here, though, Renus VK, just about 30 minutes ago and said, are you using the same setup that got you pole last year? He said, we tried it but it just wasn't quite the same. And I got to put that down, James, to maybe this softer Firestone compound this year. He's searching for more grip at the back end of his car. Hey, Marty, while we got you on the line, how is it feeling out there atmospheric-wise? Cool. It's, it's nice. Cool, cool. <laughs> it's cooling off, is it? Yes, it feels like speed. That's what it feels like, Diff. But no rain in the area. Don't worry about that. Just cloud cover right now. Nice little breeze, but it feels way cooler than what it was here yesterday at the track, I'm told. Tough break Lugard's for Lugard's team. Here. Yep, they're going to ask for interference there, Townsend. Yeah, well, and he's got a reset, re-rack here quickly offline. Hope his tires don't get dirty and try to fire off for one heater but he definitely caught the tail end. I think that was Armstrong. Armstrong, I believe it was. And then he had to let his teammate Jack Harvey go. Here's a look again. There's Armstrong in the blue and white number 11 American Legion car. Look, he's just warming his tires up on an L lap or a prep lap at least. And that's his, I mean, yeah. They, when Indy what is this guy doing? When IndyCar looks for that sort of thing, they look at, you know, difference to your last lap. Uh, and clearly that was not a hot lap for Marcus Armstrong. So that one definitely going to be under review. But it doesn't matter. Christian Lundgaard still needs to go get it done. And he yeah. is on a flyer right now. Look at Palo. 5.58. Five, Matches Newgarden's 5.58, five, five, which is quickest in group one. So Alex Palo finding his groove once again. Let's see what Lundgaard can do. Pagano out as McLaughlin jumps in. Rosenquist is on a good one. So too, uh, that green disappeared. I think it may have been on Herder's lap there. 14 seconds remain, that's it. These flying laps count big time. Herder doesn't leap over that line to six. He only goes to eight. Power's big threat right now is from Devlin DeFrancesco. It looks like DeFrancesco just seven hundredths now, a tenth and a half off. Doesn't look like it's gonna be enough as Marcus Armstrong is still on track. I'm sure that situation under review by race control. Yeah, nothing nothing yet through the uh, information pipeline yet from race control. Stand by on that one. The American Legion Honda finishes his Q1 right there, crossing the line. Hasn't been a great track for Colton Herta. Just three races here, but 24th, 22nd, and 10th in three appearances at Barber. Marcus Armstrong loses his fastest two laps because of qualifying interference. That will so that's a, that's a valuable lesson learned in his <coughs> early IndyCar days. What's, what's good for Christian Lundgaard is he was unaffected by that either way. There's muscle all over the place, and with young drivers like Kyle Kirkwood right there starting to find their groove, it's only getting harder. Well, if there are two drivers Look in at this, this, whoa, that was close. There are two drivers on that board there that stand out who are looking for a good result. It's Renus VK and Christian Lungard. Let's give them some props for making it through to the Fast 12. And let's see what pans out here over these next 10 minutes. Look at this, oh. so close. That is VK and Will Power. The two Chevy drivers almost collide. Why? We're is, on banker black tires, Hinch. What are we doing? Isn't it funny, as Will Hell looks down what? the inside, isn't it funny how in Group 1, sorry, Q1, Group 1 and 2, we had more cars on track than we do right now. And both sessions, everybody played pretty nice. They spread themselves out, gave themselves room. Outlap of, of Q2, and everybody's running into the back of one it's another. It's like everybody fired down a can of aggro or something in between in between runs. This is VK. Oh, he broke That's the why. he broke the gentleman's rule and passed Will Power. And then oh, did Whoa. they touch? They didn't, but that was some tire smoke as Venus VK had to lock up to avoid the Penske sandwich he was in. This is just bizarre. That's the reigning series champion saying, listen, kid, get back in your place. 
The gentleman's agreement is no passing on this initial lap, on this out lap. And, and I get it. I mean, if you're Will Power, you're like, dude, all we're trying to do is get a feel on this banker lap. You know, more more, more likely this is not going to be your, your log time. So Power trying to send a message to the young Dutch driver. What do you think of why they went with the uh, that set of used alternate well, tires? Well, I think for the reason that James explained, which was that it gives you maybe a closer read. It's, it's a red read and then an adjustment for a sticker set of reds. As we understand, Kyle Kirkwood had some drama. So it's like, oh, oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. T coming down from turn three, heading to turn four. Listen to oh. this. He does a fancy bit of driving to keep it spun around and going uphill. Listen. On, on the outlap. Wow. It's not great for your tires to do a 360 coming out of the pits, Townsend. Not the first time we've seen this in qualifying on an outlap for Kyle Kirkwood. You remember St. Pete? Yeah, in the Straight into the tires six. for the fast six. Now, what I don't know is if the car behind him, I believe it was Renus VK, if he was on a fast lap, got impeded by that, there will be a penalty to Kyle Kirkwood for that scenario. It's loss of fastest lap up to that point in the session. So easy to have the back of the car trying to pass it as Watch we this. see Polo across the line. Watch this. To the top. 105.83 from Alex Polo to set the pace. Less than a minute to go to draw that line in the sand of who makes it and who does not. This is Grosjean, the Auto Nation on board. Perfect down there. Nailed the line. He's got a car up front. Looks like they're still on a fast lap, so shouldn't be a traffic issue. He's on a really good lap. Award at the top, 5-7. Grosjean still looking quicker. One corner to go up over the hill. Lungard in P3. What happens with Grosjean? Does he leap? You bet. All the way to the top. 20 seconds left. His power. Not quick enough to advance. He'll get one more chance. Let's ride along. going to be interesting to see who can make this second lap work. We're still lapping almost two tenths slower than the fastest times in both groups of Q1. So if these second laps, if oh. these tires hang on. He barely touched the brake pedal for turn one. Clock's up. Pato Award going slowly there. I think he's sort of abandoned his lap knowing he's safe. Oh, he's power's two. off. Down in turn five, we we're just talking about it, and so is Renus VK. That looks like maybe two, three. Neither of those drivers will go through. The king of qualifying out and last year's pole winner out. They will not be going into the Firestone Fast Six. Scott McLaughlin. He's right there. Eight hundreds down, McLaughlin. This is it. Oh, he missed the apex just a bit, got wide. This is it. He's there and pushes his teammate Joseph Newgarden out. Good job, that's P3. All right, here we go. Love this part of qualifying. It's Q3, it's the Firestone Fast Six where there is a bonus championship point on offer. Can we get a fourth different pole winner at four attempts for this 2023 NTT IndyCar season? Will we get an eighth different pole winner here at Barber in succession. It's been tremendous uh, sharing of that NTT P1 award here at the Alabama circuit. Pato Award looking good. He's in the green. So too is Scott McLaughlin. And a couple of Chevy drivers turning up the heat. If it looks like Dixon's just kind of building the temperature slowly. Meanwhile, Award full push mode right here. This is where he had the oversteer. Let's see what happens. Oh, that looked good. It's aggressive but controlled from Pato Award. Full send there in turn seven. Look at the differential. There is nothing between Award and Grosjean as he comes to fire it over the hill. Here we go. This could be the first for Scott McLaughlin. It is. The Good Rancher's Chevy goes to the top. Here's Award. Can he respond? Yes. Yes, he does. Wow, that was brilliant. But Grosjean's on one as well. He's so close. Scott Dixon, Polo, everybody green behind. Grosjean is halfway through the lap, this almost a be, tenth to the good. This guys, is going to be a this shootout. This could be the tightest fast six in history. Look at everybody is right on top of the same tenth. Ten seconds left on the clock. Grosjean to the museum complex. Not a single tenth between the... Oh, here we oh, go. Grosjean finally. He nailed it. That's a great run through turn eight, nine. 
Now, Beautiful. just 12.13 to go before the timing line. Big commitment here from Grosjean. He Let's doesn't listen. need to take too much. Got plenty of time on his side. Here's the line. Romain Grosjean to the top. You betcha. Nice job, nice job. Three cars behind him. Scott Dixon's first up. Not going to happen. Then the 10 and the 3, but no green behind him as we see McLaughlin. Hello, hello. Nice jump. So mixes up right at the end on those final laps, but Andretti Autosport is celebrating. There's Michael, front and center. Well done. Second pole of the year for Romain Grosjean. He ruined the streak. He did. We had three for three. Now it is an extra one for him in those Delaware Life colors this weekend. Fresh from his runner-up place at the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach, Romain Grosjean is on top again. He drove so well on the streets of St. Petersburg, Florida, all for it to be undone, and it finished in the tire war when he was battling Scott McLaughlin for the win. He's going to start on pole again, and if you start on the front row here, history tells us you've got a very good chance and of victory. I'll tell you, if Grosjean gets to watch back what we just saw from all the onboards, I mean, all the drivers in the fast six, excellent, less than three tenths separating first to six, and everybody was absolutely on the limit in every corner. So Grosjean should be very proud. That's a really, really great job of executing when it matters. Let's celebrate with Romain Grosjean. Delaware Life is part of Group 1001, Marty. This is his first race in these colors. Group 1001 said, welcome to the family. And Gro Romain Grosjean says, I'm here. What an impressive performance. And you go back to yesterday, Diff. Early in that first practice session, they lost an engine. When I saw Roman this afternoon, I said, how do you feel about it? He said, behind, because they missed that first session. So how did you go from behind, as you, Michael Andretti in, how did you go from behind, as you told me earlier today, to being on the pole? I've got a, a hell of a team. Uh, we're doing such a great job this year. Uh, the car is, is awesome, and I've uh, got three, three teammates that I can uh, rely on, so I kind of... Went with that setup, uh, with the baseline we have, and from the moment we started quality, I knew I had it. So I just didn't want to miss to mess it on the last lap. So happy. Roman, this is a place where you've always felt comfortable, just like the tracks back home in Europe. Do you get the sense that the win might be in the offing for this team tomorrow? Well, see, we're starting in the best position, but no, we've got 90 laps to lead. So we'll see tomorrow, but I'm really proud of my guys and really happy with what everything we're doing. Are you feeling more confident than you've ever felt in IndyCar right now? You know what, I was very stressed that session. I don't know why. Uh, why? I don't know. I told you I'm too old for this, but uh, I guess I'm not, so it's all good. This is your second P1 award of the year. Congratulations. Roman Grosjean on the pole for the second time this year, Dave. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.